I want to get back to this breaking news that we have been following as the Texas Senate has voted to acquit embattled Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton on all 16 impeachment articles against him and he can return to office. Deliberations began Friday in Paxton's impeachment trial and the verdict was going to determine whether the Republican was removed from office over charges of bribery and corruption. One conviction would have meant Paxton was removed from office. That obviously here did not happen. The jury made up of 30 state senators, most of which were Republicans just like him. So again, the Texas Senate voting to acquit embattled Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton on all 16 impeachment articles against him. I want to dive a little deeper into all of this. Paul Coggins is a former federal prosecutor based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and joins us now live to talk about all of it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. My pleasure, Josh. So first off, just break down for me the significance of this whole decision here, because this is blowing up, of course, on social media right now as this information is all coming in. Well, uh, you know, obviously it's hugely significant in the sense that had they been able to uh, convict him of even one count, he's removed from office and, and probably at that point politically dead. Uh, given the outcome, he now goes back into his office and if not legally, at least politically, is probably stronger than ever. I mean, I don't think anybody could think about challenging Ken Paxton in a primary the way they challenged him in the last general election when this was hanging over his head. Was this the decision that was expected? Again, a lot of people have been discussing this as the trial has been playing out, but is this what we expected would happen? I think a lot of uh, Democrats and people who uh, might be more moderate Republicans and thought this was a chance to get rid of Paxton thought after the first day when the vote to on the motion to dismiss all the counts or, or all but one of the counts failed and failed as big as it did. I think people thought at that point it may be a closer call. In my mind, I always thought that the uh, prosecution might get over the 50 percent barrier but not reach the two-thirds barrier as it was they didn't even get 50 50 percent uh the highest vote total i got was 14 votes so essentially all 12 democrats and two republicans they needed nine republicans uh to vote to convict to convict on any count there's a lot to this story what has stood out to you the most about all of this as it has played out well obviously the whole uh you know it was pretty clear from the outset that Paxton and Paul would not testify. I mean, there's a federal criminal investigation going in the Western District of Texas. Um, their lawyers were not gonna let them testify in this. Nobody knew uh, if the mistress would testify. As it turned out, she's got valid Fifth Amendment uh, issues herself and claims herself, and she did not testify. So that stood out to me. Obviously, the whistleblowers uh, were the strongest witnesses for the prosecution, uh, but I thought the defense did a pretty good job of blunting some of that. By the way, the other thing that stood out to me is we don't have a lot of procedures for this. So Lieutenant Governor Patrick, I think probably did a pretty masterful job of keeping this from going completely off the rails. By and large, I think he looked a lot to the criminal procedures, but this is not a strict criminal procedure by any stretch of the imagination. Was there any sort of criminal aspect to any of this? Because that's a question that a lot of people were throwing out there as well. There's obviously a, a difference here. Can you break that down for me? Absolutely. It's not even clear what the standard is. You heard the defense talk a lot, particularly in closing argument, about beyond a reasonable doubt, because that's the standard on the criminal side. But really, in this case, what is the standard? I mean, it's probably, it could be different for every senator. So it's not clear what standard, other than their own sort of good sense, a senator applies to this impeachment vote. Um, so it, it, while they kind of looked to the criminal uh, for certain procedures, certainly the inability to call witnesses to the stand and assert the Fifth Amendment from the stand, uh, it didn't strictly follow the criminal procedures. And of course, the jurors were not instructed the way jurors are in a regular criminal trial, which is 
The only thing you can decide on is what you hear in this courtroom, not anything outside the courtroom. These senators obviously are being bombarded by information outside this hearing and bring a lot of knowledge outside this hearing about Paxton, his wife, and all the rest of these things. Are you surprised at how much attention this is receiving, not just there in Texas, but also across the country? Not really, because as I said, it's very rare. There have only been three, uh, three impeachment trials like this in Texas history, and Texas has got kind of a long history to fall back on, and a long history of you know scoundrels who have been dragged before uh, you know the courts. So uh, it, it, it's it's fairly new, and of course, uh, Paxton has been such a staunch ally of President Trump, and President Trump weighed in on this prosecution multiple times, or weighed in for the defense multiple times, I guess I should say. So I I think it's a Texas is a big state. Uh, Paxton is a big player in that state, and he's also a you know a, a strong ally of the leading candidate for the Republican nomination. So I think it's 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 it may not be as big as the Trump trials will be, but it it's a bit of a preview of those. What's next for Paxton here? Does everything just kind of go back to normal? Well, it certainly, uh, he goes back to office. Uh, and I would think, as I said, politically, uh, I imagine he's got to feel stronger than before. It's the old saying, if you shoot at the king, you know, you better, you better kill the king and not just wound the king. So I think Paxton goes back into office at least stronger politically within the Republican Party. I don't see anybody that can challenge him um, from, you know, his strong standing among those primary voters in the Republican Party. Uh, it doesn't affect anything about the ongoing criminal investigation in the Western District of Texas. It will go on and those prosecutors and those agents have now seen a preview of how witnesses will testify. To some extent, witnesses have locked themselves in on their testimony uh, and see what charges perhaps were stronger and what charges perhaps were weaker against Paxton. So I'm sure that the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office is digesting all this information now. All right, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and help break this down. Anything else that you want to add before I let you go? No, it's just that, as I said, um, there's not only that criminal investigation going, but remember the civil whistleblower case against Paxton, it's not gone either because even though they reached a settlement and even though there was an agreement to pay $3.3 million under that settlement, the money wasn't allocated by the legislature. So there's still that civil action lying around here somewhere. And finally, there's still a securities trial that will take place against Paxton. So the legal issues for Paxton are not over. And those legal issues obviously were strong reasons and compelling reasons why he took his Fifth Amendment rights and didn't testify at this trial. All right, Paul, thank you again for taking the time to be here. We appreciate it. My pleasure. And I do want to go to the statement just released here a short time ago. This is from Greg Abbott, the governor there in Texas. He says, Governor Greg Abbott issuing this statement following the Texas Senate's verdict in the impeachment trial of Attorney General Ken Paxton. He said, quote, the jury has spoken. Attorney General Paxton received a fair trial as required by the Texas Constitution. Attorney General Paxton has done an outstanding job representing Texas, especially pushing back against the Biden administration. I look forward to continuing to work with him to secure the border and protect Texas from federal overreach. Again, that statement released a short time ago by Governor Greg Abbott after we did learn the Senate voted to acquit embattled Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton on all 16 impeachment articles against him, and he can now return to office.